everyone, welcome to the episode of Let's Complete The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. In the last episode we freed, or well, all but one of the standing stones on Solstheim. Well, not really standing stones, but the all maker stone of the stones that give you magical powers. We freed most of them except the tree stone, because that one cannot be freed. And now we are going to move away from the main quest line just for a little while because honestly we're more than halfway through it. There are only seven quests in the main Dragonborn quest line and we've done four of them. So yeah, this, that's probably like, I mean, there's so many side quests and stuff in the Dragonborn DLC. But the actual main quest is so short and I really wish, you know, if they just added like one or two more quests, it would have made it so much longer. But yeah, there's another aspect of the main quest line which kind of artificially lengthens it which we haven't really seen yet so I won't talk about that but in today's episode we're going to do some side quests but first I would like to talk to this man here we have Ravis Sarvani uh oh and, oh in Nick's hand I think we can buy this one and this thing which is a silt strider which is so cool these are like it's exposed like like parts of its brain or something so you can like control it <laughs> And they, yeah, we, we use these Morrowinds. It's, it's, they're, they're just like giant, like what, fleas or ticks or whatever. And yeah, the Dunami use them as taxis, basically. <laughs> Which is really, like, it's a really cool and, you know, innovative piece of lore idea. But yeah, I think this is, like, I think you can't actually damage this, I don't think. It's just make a hot quick save anyway. But I think it's like, it's like an object. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it's not a thing. It's an object that just kind of sits there. You can't actually damage it, but... Yeah, very cool, and I think this is one of the, they're, they're kind of more rare this these these days, I think, because of Red Mountain. But anyway, let's stop yapping and talk to this man. From that look on your face, I'm guessing you've never seen a Silt Strider before. I mean, I, we're a Dunma, so I would assume that she has, but <laughs> sure, whatever. No, what is it? This is Dusty. I personally trained her from a lava. Feels like a lifetime ago now. She hasn't been in travelling condition for quite a while now. I've tried to let it go off on her own, but she insists on staying here. How do you survive out here? We get bar trading odds and ends with the locals. I've decided to stay here and make sure she passes in peace. It's the least I can do for her. Every once in a while, a local makes it out here. Although they usually just want to catch a glimpse of Dusty. Silt striders are pretty rare now. Ah, there we go. So yes, we can purchase the... In fact, yeah, I, that is a quest, so we do need to do that, so why not? I'd like to purchase the Nyx Hound. Okay, you got absolutely nothing to say about that. Cool. Uh, thanks, I guess. 400 gold. Uh, sounds like a steal to me. About Silt Striders? What would you like to know? Why are they so rare? The blast from the volcano wiped most of them out. Found Dusty in a small cave on Vardenfell. Silt Strider cocoons are pretty tough. What were they used for? Mostly for transporting goods and people. They were pretty commonplace in Morrowind, but that was ages ago. A Silt Strider carapace is so strong, it can withstand the harshest of weather. Yeah, even, even a fireball. Even the legendary sandstorms of Vardenfell's Molagama region were said to barely make a dent in them. Of course, that's all ash now. It was mostly ash before, to be honest. But yeah, enough about this. All right. And we do want to ask Take him what he has for sale because only 106 gold. But he does have something unique, which is... Oh, look at that. He's got a whole load of the new uh, alchemical ingredients, which is cool. Do you have everything? Just some, some fire arrows. Cool. But in miscellaneous, he has a Kagramez Resonance gem which is obviously very unique looking and very interesting so we are going to buy that we could pickpocket it but whatever we'll just buy it so yeah 642 gold i will take that thank you very much sir and actually while i'm here can i sell you can sell you something yeah you can have that and you're pretty much out of money uh do everything else to sell you that's even remotely ah uh, anything anything at all well hey look i'll do you a favor you can have that necklace i probably just sold him the most expensive thing all right, least money, whatever and this is our new nyx hound who do doesn't even have a name, I suppose, but let's tell him to wait for me at home. And we will send him, what's it called? What's up? What's up? Oh my god, we've got so many houses. Bloodchill Manor, that's it. Okay, great, off you go. Hey, I'll be waiting at the specified location. Excellent! So there we go, now I can 
tick that off my list of things to do. And yes, we also have the gem, which will come in handy at some point. We've got a pickaxe there, but that's fine. We've already got one of those. So, there are many things we can do. Uh, for right now, we are going to head to the old Atius farm, and we are going to head to the ruin that we saw that was just above this. Uh, that one right there. That Excuse me, Nixhound found something. Nerd Root added. Okay. Uh, cool, Th thanks. I guess, like, we didn't loot this guy before. We got t took his, like, what was that, 2 or 12 gold, whatever. Wasn't really looking, to be honest. Uh, so that, uh, just that, that made up for all the gold we just spent on the residence gym, right? Whatever. Anyway, let's uh, heal our stamina. Excuse me, I said heal our stamina. Thank you. We've also got a shack over there we can go and investigate. But we want to go and activate this location because there is something here that we need to get started. And yeah, it's better to get started sooner rather than later. So, Kjolbjorn Barrow discovered, which, if I remember correctly, we did go to in Morrowind. Um, I forget what was in there. It was... There was something in there. <laughs> There's something for sure, but I forget. And I think it did actually have a similar layout, didn't it? I don't know. Anyway, the point is, we have been here before in Morrowind. He's got, ooh, the Journal of Raelis Sedaris. We'll read that in a second. But here, here is Raelis himself. To do? That sounds like quest talk Sarah. to me. Also, that looks like an interesting pickaxe. What's the matter with you? With me? What's the matter with you? Sorry, I've just had a lot of hawk face cowards coming by to mock my efforts. Ugh. It probably can't hurt to tell you. You look mostly honest. The name's Rallis. Rallis Sidaris, out of Morhold. I've got a financier waiting for me back on the mainland. Sent me here in the interests of obtaining some rare antiquities. The relics of Arzador. But this whole thing became a disaster right quick, let me tell you. What happened? You come out of the Northern Ashlands, you don't expect things to go easy, you know. But this was something outside my particular expertise. When I first got to Colbjorn, you couldn't even see it. Buried in the ash, like most other things on this blasted island. Dug out a pile of the stuff taller than me just to find the barrel. Who knows how much to reach the door. Excavating isn't exactly my specialty. Even if it was, the ash storms fill it in faster than you can dig. I mean, I, not to criticize, but you might have more luck shoveling ash with a shovel and not a pickaxe just just an idea but you know you do you why not hire some of the miners out of raven rock you think i've got that kind of money no i only get paid on delivery can't afford to go out of pocket for a thousand septums on this takes money to make money all that rot there's a lot of it at the other end but I can't get there without a little kick to start it off. So what's this treasure you are after? You ever hear of Azador? He was the first great Nord enchanter, maybe even the first human to master Elven method. His best work was buried with him, though. A set that my patron calls the Relics are supposed to be down in his tomb. Now, they're old, and they're powerful. A combination like that makes them pretty valuable to certain people. And I happen to know certain people. Mm, one of them standing right in front of you. That sounds like something we want in our collection. I've got some money. Are you looking for a partner? What? Are you... Are you serious? Well, I think I could make that work. We can sort out the details of our little arrangement later. But for now, I'll manage the dig if you can manage the coin. Do you have the gold? Oh, buddy, I have plenty of gold. Of course. Hmm. It's all here. Well then, looks like I have a good bit of work to start on. I'll head back to Raven Rock and round up some diggers. Once we've got something worth looking at, I'll send word to you. 
Pleasure doing business with you, partner. I'll see you soon. Okay, so yes, there we go. Unearth. That this is a multiple stage, but I don't remember exactly how many stages there are. There's like three or four, I think. Um, and yeah, it, it takes quite a while. You just have to wait for him to do stuff. So this is one you want to get started early. So he, weirdly enough, he doesn't mind us reading and taking his private journals, which is strange, but everyone has different boundaries, I suppose. So how long is this? Oh uh, yeah, we'll read this now. The Journal of Rallis Sidaris, Volume 19. What happened to the first 18 volumes? <laughs> just uh, back in his home library, I suppose. Moving on to Solstheim next, chasing after vague rumours of this Kjolbjorn Barrow. My patron seems confident we can find the relics of Azadol out here. I'm a bit sceptical, but so long as he pays well, I'll dig wherever the old coup likes. Initial prospects look poor, to say the least. I was sure I had my map wrong at first, until it became clear that the place had just been lost to the ash. I'll dig out as much as I can, maybe see if I can recruit some of the local residents to help me out. I haven't seen anyone else since I got out of Ravenrock, but I keep hearing conversations and whispers around me, so I just need to track them down. Hearing voices is never a good sign. Even in the wisdom world. Rallis. Okay. <laughs> so, I would like to check out this shack because I believe, from memory, this is a fairly a little interesting location, but it is not quest related. So, it's a good one to, you know, do, get some action. And then I think we are going to head to Fort Frostmoth, which I believe is right over there, uh, because we have this quest to do, March of the Dead. But for now, let's check out this little hut over here. We do have max uh, destruction, by the way. So it looks like, yeah, clearly... Oh, Roldoff's house discovered. Okay, and we have some Abscorn to deal with. Uh, you know what? Why don't we uh, get get Dusk out? Oh, excuse me. Back to the corner. That's extremely rude. The pole was blocked by my path there. Yeah, we need to uh, re-level our, our conjuration back up, which is fine. I can just do it off camera. But if we have an opportunity to summon Dusk, we will take it. Indeed, there is no master at all, Dusk. You did a good work. You know, I know we haven't seen you in quite a while, but good job. You're just as just as strong as ever. So, yeah, we just got a ruined house here, I suppose. They had a flawless diamond in there. Ah! Here we have an East Empire Company strong box, which we definitely want to open. An expert lock, but there is something special in here that we definitely want so if the lock picking would just work with me <laughs> excuse me come on you want to let me in i'm very important <laughs> no come on where is it yeah these uh these ex expert and up locks are awfully difficult there's just like no leeway there we go okay lock picking increased to 80 nice here we have a potion of ultimate healing and an East Empire pendant. Excuse me, I want to zoom in on it. Thank you. So you can see we've got a little ship icon on it. Yeah, it's unique looking. And we definitely want to take these. Um, but doesn't actually... Why are we injured, by the way? Is that just left over from the fight? I don't even know. I thought we healed that, but no, I guess not. But yeah, those are interesting. And we'll, we'll expand upon that later. Now, I, was, I thought there was... Something, yeah, here we go. Yeah, we have a trap door here, which goes into Hroldoff's house. Well, I, I suppose it's more like the basement, because, I mean, if this is the house, then there's not much left of it. It's clearly been destroyed for quite a while, looking at the uh, terrible state of the roof. But, hey, let's head inside and see if there's anything interesting down here. Oh, you're going to ruin things, Dusk. Actually, let's just pop <laughs> straight back out here and uh, just wait an hour. <laughs> Because, yeah, I forgot that, yeah, Dusk, of course. Are you going to disappear? Dusk? Okay, I don't even know where he's gone. Hopefully he's disappeared, though, because, yeah, he's going to cause problems otherwise uh, for sneaking. Yeah, there we go. He's gone. Great. Got a whole lot of furniture thrown against the walls here. Uh, oh! I, I thought they talked. Do you not talk? No? Might pay off my bounty this time. Told them to just Walking hand to it over, Rock but did he listen? Man. Oh no, he had to fight back. Okay, that just sounds like normal bandit talk. <laughs> Maybe we missed it because we went back here. That's annoying. Anyway, uh, let's kill these people because they are just readers. I'd kill for a decent bottle of mead. I should go Not back to fair that they always take yeah, okay. good stuff. <laughs> Just doing a uh, random dialogue. Wow, they they got out of their seat quickly. But it's not going to help them. They never even knew where we were. You got anything interesting over here? The Lusty Argonian made volume two. Men of taste, I see. 
<laughs> Anything else interesting over here? I think they were they were supposed to be like mocking someone and like making a joke or something, which I'm sure we'll find out more of in a second. Have we got any interesting books here? Not really. Do you guys have anything interesting on you? Just some gold? Oh, I'll take that lockpick as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, you guys have nothing interesting. Aha! There's Frodolf's journal, though. There's also an interesting helmet on the floor there. One. I've arrived... One. One what? <laughs> I did Okay. One. I've arrived in Solstheim and moved into an old house on the hills by the shore. Whoever lived here before is long gone. Two. I can see well out into the waters from my vantage here and can hear all the things behind and around. Dunmer bandits wander the woods at night, but I don't fear them. Well, maybe you should have. Five. There is a calling from the depths, a rumble drone that sings to me at night. I've started sleeping in the basement and keeping a- plus keeping a knife near? Okay. The call is loudest down here. I will be ready for whatever is coming. Six. It is as if a great machine reverberates beneath me. 10. I tire of waiting for the caller underneath to emerge. I walked to town, plus bought some digging tools. Shovel, shovel, pick. I started to break down the wall behind the bookshelves, plus dig down slow. Slow going, I put the bookshelf back when I finished digging. Why? <laughs> no house guests here, but I feel I have something to hide. Wow, this guy is not good with grammar. <laughs> 13. How can I make Bjorn hear what I have heard? I must not lose him, yet I must remain in this place, for I know I will know, know the truth soon. 23. The murmurer in the earth and I, we talk, I lay my head against the dirt. 51. Fire from the deep. Okay, so that's uh, clear as mud. Yeah, we've got a yeah, silver helmet there. Anything interesting in the chest? Not really, but I'll take the 40 gold. So yeah, and obviously that was a big hint there about the bookshelf. Activate the bookshelf. Very cool. That's classic fantasy trope which we all love to be honest pickaxe and oh yes we've got some dwarven machinery now i'm not really sure exactly what this is i don't think uh, they ever really explain it but here we have bjorn, bjorn yolfa uh who was mentioned in the journal i mean blood bloodstained note uh anyone else or just this guy we've got some dwarven metal ingots which we don't need a dwarven chest with some gold okay great and yeah just a whole load of dwarven junk but it doesn't really I mean, this looks like it could be a thing. Yeah, like an orb that opens up or something. But yeah, I don't think it really goes any more in depth than this. We will read that bloodstained note, though. Assuming we can, it's not too covered in blood. Uh, bloodstained letter. Oh, wow, okay. Bjorn, do not come to this place. I have not much self left. The earth will take us both. H. Okay, so H is Fro Froldolf or whatever, whoever's house we're in. Um, and yeah, Bjorn is this guy? Or, yeah, B Bjorn Yolfa, so I guess that was a nickname. And yeah, I think he's, uh, this is like a, a gay gay male relationship. It's not, it's not very clear, but just from the name. I uh, see, so yeah, what, what are you? Are you a Imperial Nord? I don't know, but probably a Nord from that name. Uh, but yeah, so Bjorn Yolfa is dead. The one who, you know, Hrolfdar told not to come here, except, with, like, wh where's Hrolfdar? <laughs> I don't know. And yeah, it certainly seems like he was losing his mind. But we don't really know why. We've just got a little a little Dwemer thing down here, which doesn't really go any deeper, and there's just not really any explanation. There are obviously Reavers here who, you know, killed someone, I suppose, at least took over the house. I'm not sure. I assume the, the, the Reavers killed, you know, Bjorn Yolfa, but whatever the hell happened to... Who, what's this guy's name? Yeah, Froldolf. We'll never know, I suppose. I'm sure there's some lore videos about that, but... Anyway, did a little bit of exploration, and now let's do March of the Dead. Captain Valoth was alarmed by the strange note I recovered from the ash spawn at the Atius farm. The note mentions Fort Frostmoth, the ruins of an imperial fort located, located southeast of Ravenrock. According to him, the fort's been abandoned ever since the eruption of Red Mountain. He sent me to Fort Frostmoth to kill the author of the note, General Falks Carius, before the town falls prey to his threats. Now, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the fort right up here. I am very excited about this. <laughs> because, of course, now that I've played Morrowind, I have actually been to Fort Frostmoth and met General Falks Carius, although he was called Captain Falks Carius at the time, so that's interesting. I guess he was promoted in between. <laughs> in between events. Oh, look at this. Yeah, this. Wow, okay, I'll walk right into that one. This must be 
the dock and that that's like, you know, the wreck of a boat, I suppose, that brought us over. Yeah, this is so cool now that I've actually played Morrowind and everything. And yeah, the, uh, the, the Blood Moon DLC that, uh, you know, brings you to to Solstheim and Morrowind is uh, probably my favourite part of the entirety of Morrowind. Is there anything anything cool down here? I don't, I don't really think so, but we can have a look anyway. Just some clams and stuff. We do have a uh, water-breathing necklace if we need it. Anything, anything vaguely interesting is actually there's possible. There's a possibility there may be an East Empire strongbox down here, with a pendant, which is something that we need. But no, it doesn't look like it. Okay, well there we go. We've got a little shipwreck down there. We need to actually uh, get. Oh, can we not get up the stairs? Okay, looks like we'll have to swim round. My bad. It took took us like an extra. We wasted like five seconds. But never mind. We'll keep moving. So this is the fort. And yeah, it does actually look you know kind of similar in layout. <laughs> than it did previously, which is again very exciting to me. We have uh, someone up here, probably another Ashborn, who's uh, upset with us. That's a great shot, bro. Great shot. And yeah, I think once we're, obviously we're kind of outside, so we'll be able to see the time, but once we're inside, we're going to switch over to a bow because we have now maxed out destruction. So yeah, our bow is kind of the only thing we have left to level up at this point. Well, other than... Um, <laughs> Other than two-handed, but I don't, we're not actually going to do that like canonically. I'll just grind that out at some point. So yeah, we will switch over to a bow soon. So hello, boys. Men, an invader has entered the fort. I, okay, that dialogue was a bit glitchy. Yeah. But apparently, Fort Frostmoth will never fall. Long live the Empire. I okay. I mean, listen. I, I like look. I respect you, Carrius. I do. Uh, but I don't think you. I don't think you quite know who you're dealing with here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, trust me, this, it, listen, if Luvana decides that something's gonna fall, it, it will fall, and that's it's just end of discussion, really. Uh, let's get Dusk up in here, so that we can get this over with quickly and get on inside. These guys are very, very cool looking, by the way. Yeah, we're kind of uh, at a bit of a disadvantage, because most of our stuff is fiery, including Dusk's sword. Uh, and of course, these guys are, you know, like fire fire elemental things, so of course they don't take much damage from that. Oh, you know what? This is the perfect opportunity for. Fus, Roda! Bye bye! Ah, so much fun. Did you die? Yep, excellent, perfect. Thank you so much. Makes my day, honestly, when that happens. Wow, we've got so much health at this point. Okay, is there anyone, anyone else here? Or are we about done? Good job, Dust. Good job. Got a whole load of buried training dummies. And yeah, so this is, this is kind of like, you know, the exact layout, which is so cool. So it's telling us to go in here, into Fort Frostmoth. Let's wait an hour and get rid of dust. Thank you, you've been very helpful, but we must part ways now. So let's switch over to our Bow of Shadows, which wasn't working before. It wasn't actually making us invisible, so I don't know quite what's going on there, but whatever. We'll make do... Oh, look, now we're invisible? Okay, whatever. The point is, we're going to use a bow. So, oh, hello. I love that you're uh, rising out of the ash to- Wow, okay, we're being detected already, Jesus. I love that they rise out of the ash to, you know, attack us when they're not even, like, they're not even actually aware that we were there because we weren't detected at that point. Okay, looks like this isn't gonna work. Because, yeah, we just do not, we don't have any of that. We could actually put points in the archery, I think. We might have a look at that in a second. Because, yeah, wow, we're, like, we're, why are we swinging so fast? <laughs> I have no idea. I feel like sometimes the um, the, the daggers, they just kind of glitch out like that. I, I mean, they glitch in our favor, but yeah, they just, sometimes they'll just suddenly move really fast and I don't really know why, but hey, I ain't complaining. So yeah, we might have to, you know what? I think I probably just need to enchant a really good bow, to be honest. I thought the uh, bow of shadows would be good, but it's not really, <laughs> at least not the level we are. So yeah, I think I will enchant our own bow so that we can actually use it uh, in between episodes, but or maybe if we have time, we can do it on an episode, but we'll see how long this quest takes us. Can I get into this chest, please? Come on. I mean, it's just going to be the ra random loot, probably, but I have to check. Okay, come on. Just let me let me into the damn chest. <laughs> please. It's not this difficult. Just let me in. It's only in a depth lock. No. Let me in. No. What the hell? Where is the sweet spot? Let me into the goddamn chest. Are you joking me? It. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Fine. I guess it was literally exactly at the top. Whatever. Okay, moving on. Well, looks like, yeah, that's a weird kind of... Is the... Yeah, you know what? This is kind of the layout of some of the rooms, isn't it? This Is this like the shrine? I think. I think this is like what would be the shrine in the 
in Fort Frostmoth in Morrowind because you come in and then you turn this way and there's uh, the, the guy who's not very happy to see you. And then you come and there's, yeah, there's like, there's a thing here um, and then it goes, well, it goes upstairs, which has clearly been, they've, they've like destroyed it. But yeah, very interesting. So I don't think, I don't know which way we're, I think we're supposed to go that way, but I want to explore everything. And I remember this location being a little bit weird in terms of, I can hear someone moving. Oh, hi. Oh, yes, I remember what's going on with this location now. Okay, wow, and we're being noticed already. Wow, yeah, our sneak is like... Our sneak is really bad, to be honest. And yeah, our dagger is swinging definitely like way fast. I don't really know why. Hey, that works for me, honestly, because it means that we can kill these people much faster. And then, wow, good good job, Dust. That was a great swing. Great swing. Really working above your pay grade there. Excuse me, can you stop moving around, please? Also, like, you just kind of... Just walking around like a zombie, not really doing anything, you know, f fight back maybe, make it worth my time. Okay, that door requires a key. So that might be where we need to go, or that might be a way out, I'm not sure. What is through here? Okay, that's a master. Ugh. Okay, I mean, we can probably find a key for that, but I want to... <laughs> I want to open it, because it'll give us a lot of lockpicking progress, but at the same time, I don't want to sit here for ages and lockpick. So, come on. Come on. It's like right here. Just, just let me open the door. Just let me open the door. It's fine. It's not going to break the bank. I hate master locks. <laughs> and I mean, honestly, it's like that they're, they're fine normally, but it's like when I'm recording, it's like I want to I want to keep the playthrough moving. I mean, like seriously, where is this? I feel like it's it's just always wrong now. I okay, yeah. You know what? We'll we'll come back to that perhaps. Let's open up this. I'm assuming yes. Okay, so yes, we have seen these very briefly before. <laughs> Oh! Okay, no, no, no! Please, please, please stop this. Okay, I love how they were jumping at me even though they didn't see me. I think they were actually probably probably trying to jump at dust, but uh, <laughs> they couldn't quite reach him. But yeah, these are new, a new type of spider, my favorite thing ever. <laughs> and yeah, they are they are very cool to be honest. So yeah, we have albino spider eggs which have these damaged pods. Uh, and yeah, they are very cool. We've also got a whole load of geode veins, uh, which would, would give you gems if you mined them, as well as heart stones, uh, which are, well, we, w we will need them for something, but not quite yet. Uh, great job, by the way. We will take some of these pods, because I think we do, well, yeah, we definitely will need them for, again, something, but we won't, we won't, yeah, I won't say any more than that, because I don't want to ruin anything. Anything this way? Okay, Dusk has pieced out, that's fine, it's, it's just like a dead end, so... That's great, I suppose. So yeah, I think this is just a little thing to kind of introduce you to them as an enemy. So yeah, they're I, not my favorite things, but at the same time, those ones are... They, they scare me less than, uh, you know, the, the other ones. Bros probably because they're much smaller, but... Okay, let's keep going. We got anything else down here? Just got a whole load of coffins. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, what the hell happened here, honestly? I mean... Oh! Hi! Can I... Oh man, yeah, our, our sneak was like... I don't know what's wrong with our sneak, honestly. I think we probably just need to enchant stuff with sneak. Ooh, light armor increased to 96, though. That is good. Hell yeah. Extreme healing? Nope, I only want ultimate healing. Please and thank you. We've got nothing interesting over here. Okay, very disappointing, but fine, I suppose. And... Oh, isn't there something to do with this knapsack? Yes! Fort Frost Moth Key. Yeah, as soon as, I, as soon as I saw that knapsack, I was like... This is important, right? And yes, indeed it is. And here, oh, we have a journal. Yes, I forgot about this. So, Ildari's journal. How long is this? Quite long, but it is relevant. Uh, and also remember this, remember the contents of this journal because it's relevant to something else later as well. Day 32. It's been almost a month since unearthing the crypt at Fort Frostmoth, and I haven't seen a single spark of life in the general's remains. Grafting the heartstone to the subject is proving much more difficult than I originally anticipated. I've used almost every method I can think of, and still there's no sign of reanimation. At this rate, it could be years before I make any progress, which is time that I just can't afford right now. If my vengeance is to come to fruition, I need results. If not, I may need to resort to more drastic measures. Day 47. It finally appears that I'm making some progress. After my latest experiment, General Carius' eyes briefly opened and he moved his arms. It lasted for less than a few moments, but it's the first sign of progress I've seen since I arrived here. 
A few of my assistants were insisting that I was imagining things, but I dismissed them for their insolence. They won't be bothering anyone ever again. Day 55. General Carius awoke fully today. He bolted upright after my incantations and began staggering around like a blind man. He seemed to ignore my commands. In fact, hearing my voice seemed to increase his hostility. I was able to remove the heartstone before he became violent, but this isn't a, isn't a result that I expected. Even though he's able to be awakened, I feel as though the real work has just begun. Day 59. The general is still unable or unwilling to listen to my commands. He's acting increasingly paranoid and appears to have his own free will. He's convinced that I am a spy or the enemy, and I've had to restrain him to prevent him from outright attacking me. This is becoming intolerable. I'm beginning to wonder if someone with a heartstone can be commanded at all. If my experiments with General Carius fail, I may have to resort to self-experimentation, something I've been avoiding for a long time. Oh, come on, it just... Ah, why do they always have to do that? Self-experimentation. Ooh. Daedric Sword of Exhaustion. Very cool, but just not worth the carry weight, in my opinion. Anything interesting in here? 67 gold? Nice. Okay. Well, there we go. We now know that someone called Ildari has been... is behind who's, you know, Carius' resurrection. Uh, and yeah, something to do with grafting a heartstone. Now, I assume this opens with the key? Yes, indeed it does. Now, does the key open this? As well, it does. Okay, excellent, yeah. I know we're missing out on some lockpicking progress there, but whatever, and we only got 176 gold. I would rather keep the playthrough moving. So, there was also another... Yeah, I'm just... I want to go and check up here first, because there was another thing this way. Oh, I think this might actually be a dead end from memory. Anyone? Anyone else? I thought I thought I heard something, but I suppose not. Okay, anything? Anything else in here? Just some, some armor, more ash. Yeah, there is an abundance of ash on Solstein. Yeah, okay, just a whole lot of trash, really. Nothing up here. I suppose this goes out. Yeah, out to Solstein. Okay, fair enough. Let's go back down, and yeah, we need to go through the, the door that required a key. There's always like a sound whenever I walk through there, <laughs> which is throwing me off. But yeah, I think it's an enemy, but it's not. So let's go back, back and sneak. Excuse me. Ah, uh, oh wow, we're here already. Okay, yeah, it's a pretty short location. So. That looks like General Falk Carius to me, and yeah, it's so cool that like, I, you know, I, we met him in Morrowind and everything. He was a cool guy, you know? I don't want to ruin anything, but he was a cool guy and he, um, he survived a lot. This is an ash spawn. <laughs> Clearly, someone's gonna come out of there, but uh, we'll deal with them later. So for now, let's roll over here. I don't, I don't think we'll be able to assassinate him, but we can go and say hi anyway. Hi! You did, oh, look at that! Yeah, and look, you can see he's got a heartstone strapped to his chest. With like a unique little thing there, so yeah, he doesn't say anything, but yeah, I suppose we'll say hi anyway. Hi. Now you're mine. Yeah. Okay. Oh yes, and that weapon yeah. is also yeah. unique, by the way. Yeah. So, oh, don't block, don't block, buddy. Yeah, you know what? You're actually pretty strong. Let's summon Dusk. <laughs> nice swim. Um, yeah, because we got quite a. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, we have a lot of people. You know what? This would be the perfect time for Nightingale subterfuge. <laughs> There we go, excellent. Powers can only be used once a day, that's fine. Uh, now, that may have also affected Dusk. But yeah, the point is they should all be fighting each other now as well, which is excellent, because it gets the aggro off of me, which is ultimately the main problem. Now, I know you're thinking probably, oh, you should kill General Salt's carrier first, because then the Ash Spawn will die, but that is not how it works. Because uh, he doesn't actually summon them and he won't. Oh yeah, he's pretty powerful. He won't die if you... Oh, sorry, everyone else will die. So he'll carry. Yeah, he's, he, this guy is really strong. <laughs> like, really strong. Let's, uh... Solitaire hit. Yeah, wow. Oh, my God. This guy is... <laughs> this guy is beefy. Let's use some magic. Yeah, we don't want him to hit us with that. You failed. Yeah. I actually feel bad killing him a bit now that I... Uh, I mean, Luvana doesn't care, obviously. Another Fort Frostmoth key. And the Champion's Cudgel. 50% chance for each element of fire, frost, and shock to do 84 points of damage. Which is, it's not a unique enchantment, but it is like a new enchantment that comes with the Dragonborn DLC. So, um, yeah. And the Champion's Cudgel is a very unique looking weapon. It's like a like a meat tenderizer thing. And look, it's got the, the Imperial Sigil on it. Very cool looking. I don't think he actually used this in Morrowind, but... It's cool nonetheless. So, yes, we're going to take that and we're going to put it on our wall. So, thank you very much, Carriers. Yeah, look at that. See, he's got the heartstone in his chest. Very, very cool. And, yeah, it's sad that he came to uh, such an end, you know, because he was, he was a good man. 
Uh, you know, a strong man went through a lot. We've got the wild elves. Cool. We've got no, no other. Wow, we've got two copies of the wild elves. Who really likes that book? <laughs> Anything interesting in this chest of yours? 167 gold. Well, I'll take it. That goes out to Solstein. So yeah, now I thought there was something else in here. That also goes out to Solstein and requires a key. I thought there was, um, it might be in the other room actually. Although this might actually take us out where I was just thinking of. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I thought there was, um, I thought there was like some other journals or notes. Maybe I just missed it. Might have glitched through the floor. So let's just, I want to double check and make sure I didn't miss anything. So let's just pop back in here quickly. Um, because yeah, I thought there was something else, but perhaps I'm thinking of a different location. Maybe we got all of this uh, Imperial armor and stuff. Oh, well, I missed the East Empire Company strongbox. So yeah, I'm glad I went back in here. Oh man, more lockpick. I'm not doing great for lockpicking today, am I? <laughs> okay, but yeah, we need to uh, lockpick every single one of these strongboxes we come across because they will all have an East Empire Company pendant in them. Uh, which we do need to collect. I don't actually know exactly how many there are. I think there's like around 30 or something I want to say, but I, I don't know if that's an exact number or if you just need to get 30, but there's actually more than that. I'm not sure. Anyway, is there, is there really nothing else in here? I thought there were... Oh, we've got a knapsack here. Did I not search this? Doesn't look like it, but there's nothing interesting in it. Is there not something... I really thought there was something or someone else that had an extra little bit of story in it. We search this chest, yeah. No? Am I imagining things? Did I miss something? I was so sure that there was something else here. But now I'm now I'm doubting myself. Nothing through here? Potions? Yeah, I'm just worried it might have uh, fallen through the ash somehow. <laughs> Let's just double check down here. Because yeah, I was so sure it was at Fort Frostmoth is like related to this place, I suppose. But, oh, here, yes, yes. See, see, I knew I was missing something. We have Maximian Axius, who I don't recognize that name, so I don't know if he was actually in Morrowind. I'll have to go back and check, but maybe. Either way, we have some letters here. So we have a letter to Selena, one, two, three, and four. So let's take all of these and we will read them. Uh, take this one as well. And yeah, see, see, I knew there was an extra bit of story in here that we were missing. So, a letter to Selina, one. My dearest Selina, it's been a difficult day. General Carius ordered us to help the laborers shore up the walls since they're starting to show their age. It was back-breaking work, but without the extra support, those walls wouldn't stand up to a siege. Some of the men are grumbling about the task, but I don't agree with them. The general knows what's best for Fort Frostmoth, and I would follow him to oblivion and back if he asked. There's a supply ship due on Solstheim in a few weeks, and I hope to send you all these daily letters I've been writing. I hope you enjoy reading them as much as I enjoy writing them. I miss you, Selina, and I can't wait to see you when my time on Solstheim is through. Yours always, Maximian Axius, 20th of Evening Star, 4th Era, 04. So that's four years after the Oblivion Crisis and about... Mm, 10 or 11 years after Morrowind. Morrowind is like 6 or 7 years half before Oblivion, I think. Now we have number 2. My dearest Selina, Euphemius was killed this morning by one of those awful reeklings. We were escorting a supply wagon from Fort Frostmoth to Raven Rock when a war party of those bastards ambushed us from the cliffs. We fought them off, but poor Euphemius was impaled by one of their spears. The healers at the fort couldn't do anything for him, and I watched him slip away as I held his hand. I don't know how much longer I can stand being here. My loyalty to the Empire and the strong words of General Carius delivers to us each morning muster. Morning muster are the only things keeping me going. The supply ship should arrive tomorrow, and I promise to give the quartermaster my letters so they can finally be sent home. Give my love to the children. Yours always. Maximian. Axius. Number three. My dearest Selina, the supply ship due in Solstheim hasn't arrived yet, and no one knows what's happened to it. I'll keep writing these letters in hopes that they can be delivered to you one day. It's awful being isolated on Solstheim like this, but General Carius keeps telling us we need to maintain Fort Frostmoth for the good of the Empire. I believe what he's saying only because he's never led us down the wrong path in the past, but I'm wondering if anyone on the Imperial Council even gives a damn about this pile of rock. Four soldiers have died in the last two years at Fort Frostmoth. 
It almost seems as though the Empire takes us all for granted and expects us to sit out here and get chipped away at like the rock inside the mines. My posting here can't end soon enough. Yours always. Fourth Era 05, so a new year now. And final letter. My dearest Selena, this is my last letter. I don't know if you'll ever get any of them, but I'll keep them on me in case I'm ever found. Something happened here, Selena. It was horrible. Something's happened at the Red Mountain, but I can't describe it. It's as if hundreds of oblivion gates opened at once at its summit, and it's spitting fire and death in all directions. Fort Frostmoth has been completely destroyed. The walls crumbled like loose dirt, and the land is on fire. Everything around me smells of ash and of death, and I don't know where anyone is. I've been trapped in one of these lower sections of the fort, and I don't expect to be rescued any time soon. I miss you, Selina. I want to hold you and the children in my arms and tell you that everything is going to be fine, but I don't think that will ever happen. Give my love to Circeus and Attia for me. Tell them that their father died bravely defending the Empire, so they can hold their heads high when they speak of me one day. And you, my love, when you close your eyes at night, think of me so my spirit can finally come home. Yours always and forever, Maximian Axius. Fourth Era 05. So yeah, a very sad little tale. Yeah, I can't believe I missed that. Disgusted at myself. I always get uh, just yeah, a little bit anxious when I miss unique stuff because it's like, oh god, what if you know? Because I like I knew about that, so I need to go back and look for it. But it's like, what, what if there's something I don't know about and I just straight up miss it? But anyway, we I think yeah, we have time to just about go back um, and tell uh, t tell the people what we've done that we've uh, you know killed. Well, put 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 carriers back to rest because he was already dead. But you know, put put it put him back in the ground where he belonged. Although it is honestly a very sad, sad ending for such a great man. But anyway, I'm back. What news do you bring from Fort Frostmoth? I killed General Carrius. I had my suspicions that he was undead. How else could he have survived for over two hundred years? It's a shame. There are quite a few tales of General Carrius's exploits, including the founding of Raven Rock. Yeah, I mean, Carius didn't actually help with Raven Rock. That was me. <laughs> but sure, I mean, there's actually like way more exploits to do with the main quest. But I, I don't want to spoil it. But it, you know, he he survived a lot. So you know, he'll no longer send Ashspawn to Raven Rock. Councillor Morvane told me to give this to you if you made it back in one piece, and you got rid of General Carius. Better than a soldier's pay. So you should be thankful. Okay. Wow, wow. 10,000. Oh my god. My yeah, 10,000. Yeah, actually, bit. you know what? Thank you. Thank you very much. So, we're going to end this episode here. In the next episode, I think we will uh, get to know the people of Raven Rock a little bit more, ask around. We'll wait for a note from uh, Rallis at some point. Uh, and yeah, and then we, we will continue with the main quest eventually, but I don't want to rush it since it's so, uh, it's so short anyway, you know? We want to make the most of it. So yeah, I will also, I will make. I'll make a bow for us uh, in between episodes so that we can start leveling up archery and we might put some perks into that as well. So, yeah. But for now, I'm going to leave this episode here. So I hope you have enjoyed. Like the episode if you have. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I will see you in the next episode.